doing today, man? Exceedingly well. Oh, I'm doing real good. Really, really, really good. I, I'm really excited about us doing this interview today because I read your uh, white paper uh, and um, your white paper that's uh, it's entitled here, Sustainable and Secure Municipal Con Connectivity. That's the one. And uh, so just for the viewing audience, I think there's a lot of people, which included myself the, until recently, that really only have a, a meager understanding um, of what municipal con connectivity is and sustainable and all these things, technological terms. But in this particular white paper, you are you were, you were touching the, the very public heart. You were talking in this white paper about uh, primarily a lot of things, but primarily you start off with smart cities. And can you just tell the viewing audience basically what the heck is a smart city and what are some of the things that make up a smart city? It's an ambiguous term to tell you the truth. Um, there's a lot of things that can make up a smart city. Um, there's a lot of um, talk about smart cities um, from a lot of different industries and the needs of various industries and how the smart cities might appear to them. Um, I, uh, I have experience in a number of different industries, but the one that plays most prominently in this scenario is, is, is computer technology where the concept of what is and isn't smart um, is really predicated on what is and what isn't connected. Uh -huh. And what computer technology has been doing for decades is providing the connectivity that people need in order to uh, um, well, communicate information, uh, money, uh, ideas, uh, well, all the things that you can run through connectivity. And uh, this is uh, a manifestation of that uh, reality that, that people um, are going to need to communicate in order to be uh, uh, to, to, to do things going forward as a culture, as a community, as individuals, um, enhancing our education, broadening our horizons. Um, connectivity is the essence of um, why we have ears and why we've been given tongues. Well, and and, and, and I understand that. And when you're saying connectivity, you you're really not just speaking uh, from person to person. You're talking about people and things, right? They talk about this. Um, universe of things or the internet of things. I don't see, um, yes. Um, the internet of things is, is, is a manifestation of what you would call ergonomics. <clears throat> um, the intermeshing of mankind with his machines. But what we're finding out is that that connectivity manifests itself electronically. Um, human interface software, human interface devices, um, technology used to interface the human experience um, uh, with reality. I see, okay. So when we when and we move into the smart city aspect, I, I've been on the internet and I've seen some things, I'm sure there's hundreds of other people that might see this interview, about smart cities. But I mean, what's so special about hooking a few devices together um, with people? Well, the operative word would be people. <laughs> the, uh, the benefits would benefit the people in, in numerous tangible ways, um, even though it's the devices themselves that are, that are, that are taking, making use of the connectivity. Um, uh, traffic control uh, would probably be the most uh, popular. Um, the, uh, the smart traffic lights, wireless traffic lights, um, intelligent um, fire hydrants, um, smart parking meters, uh, robotic lawnmowers, Robotic um, lawn mowers. Oh, yeah, the beginning is just you know, that's scratching the surface. Trash spiders, about the size of a of a dog, they can run around um, on the ground picking up trash. All done automatically you know, with, with automation. Intelligent uh, artificial intelligence will be able to do a lot of different things uh, with robotics. When the, the two of them come together in a municipal environment, um, your imagination can literally run wild. My goodness, I could think of a thousand and one different things. Uh, if you talk about, you put it like that. You could design a, uh, a, um, a device to design to keep birds off your roof. When it sees a bird, it runs out there and scares it off <laughs> and runs back. You know, it, it's, there's no limit to what you could do. Wow. And I thought drones were something else, but I mean, drones, I mean, it's, it's, things have just gone Well, drones bonkers. represent the flying devices, mm -hmm. but they're also mounted devices, walking, rolling. There's a wide range of, of, of robotic devices that would qualify as, 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 as intelligent devices. Um, you could call them drones as well, yes. I heard that by the year 2020, 
there's going to be over 30 billion uh, not dollars, but over 30 billion things, devices and whatnot, worldwide that are actually are interconnected. That's, um, uh, that's, that's, I don't know, that's, it's mind-boggling, isn't it's it? It's mind-boggling. <laughs> oh, my God. But, it, but it's inevitable. And um, there's talk about how the growth of the Internet um, is becoming obsolete. There's, there's ways they want to modify it to, to be able to better accommodate the, the additional nodes. But however the infrastructure modifies itself to support the concept, it'll happen. But the concept will be here. Uh, the, the concept of universal connectivity uh, has been validated in so many different ways that uh, with the technology that supports it will uh, will mature, will okay. evolve over time. Um, but the ultimate objective of supporting the concept will, will remain uh, the, the, the central focus of all the technology. Well, now, as, and that's something that concerns me because we're getting more and more connected. But then what about the, the, the idea of security? I mean, you know, you have so, so many things being hacked into today. I mean, it's, it's kind of scary. I mean, you know, what if I had a device in my house that could, you know, vir virtually look into my whole private environment, but yet someone hacks into it and see, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just, I, I can't imagine. It's, it's frustrating for those of us who work um, on the side of the good guys. <laughs> Okay, we're the ones that, that, that keep the hackers at bay. Praise God. Um, they're, um, despite what you may have heard in the news or seen in the news reports or heard from official positions, um, the, 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 the Internet is 100% hack-proof. No one's ever stolen a dime through the Internet. No, wait, 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 wait. How can that be true when we hear news reports every week about somebody hacking into, they hacked into Target and they hacked into... You name it. Equifax. Equifax. Um, and, lot, what you, and, and if you listen carefully to the rhetoric, <clears throat> the terminology is important. You've never heard of anybody's employee data being stolen. Okay. What has been stolen has been customer data. Customer data. Now, mind you, if you're the customer, <laughs> you don't <laughs> care, right? <laughs> and if one of the employees happens to be a customer, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. care, right? But the bottom line is the Internet is 100% secure. The World Wide Web is, is not. And what you're seeing is there's the servers that are connected to the World Wide Web that have to deal with uh, websites that interact with customers online. Mm -hmm. Those servers themselves are susceptible to being hacked. Okay. If a, if a company owns those servers like Equifax does or, or like the bank does or like somebody else does, those websites are, are susceptible to being hacked. There's a secure socket they can assign to it. You've seen it, HTTPS. Right. And with, with that type of security on those websites, that's why you can go do banking on those websites as well. So uh, the, the connectivity itself is secure. But the servers themselves, yeah, well, you know, it depends on who's driving. So it's possible that somebody could get to my money, huh? They could get to, um, no, not to your money. Not to no, my they money. They can get to your information. Because your money doesn't go through the, through, the, through the World Wide Web. When they go through that secure socket, it goes straight to the Internet. Yeah, and, and that, that's 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 why they do it. If your money was in jeopardy, trust me, the banks would because it's their money. It's insured by the FDIC, and, and, and they're responsible for yada yada yada. There's a lot of legal things in the background, but no, you don't want you know, the banking institutions would not use it if there was a hole in the bucket. Well, so I think there's still some confusion here that that, that maybe the, our listeners might. What's the difference then between the World Wide Web and the Internet? I mean, people think those are the same thing. They're not. They're not the same thing. No. The Internet um, is where the World Wide Web works. It's where it floats, if, if, if you will, on top of the Internet. The World Wide Web is nothing more than a protocol, a language. A language, okay. It's designed that can be spoken on the Internet connectivity. That language is designed specifically, exclusively, for the sole purpose of the appeasement of our eyes and our ears. What do you mean by that? Be able to see things, colorful pictures, read words. Listen okay. to sounds and music and all that other kind of stuff for your right. eyes and your ears. Okay, that's the, and that's the World Wide Web. That's what the World Wide Web is for. That's what HTTP is for. Okay. It's to provide well, colors and sound. Oh, um, hypertext and, you know. All of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Things for your eyes and your ears. Yeah, right. Machines don't have eyes and ears. Okay. So, on the Internet, there's no need for any of that. So, you're saying the machines is the same as saying the Internet. The machines are on the internet. And you the, are on the World Wide Web. And the people on the World Wide Web. Right. That's the WWW. The first W stands for world. And therein lies your problem. But why do they keep calling it? See, it's, why do people call that the internet? I'm going to get on the internet. Let me get on the internet. It, well, the word naivete comes to mind. Um, lack of information. 
um, I don't want to call it ignorance, but there's a lot of words you could that have the, you know they're synonymous. But the bottom line is they're getting onto the World Wide Web. Okay. Okay. That um, makes sense. The, the machines get onto the internet. This is why we're doing this interview then mainly because we want people to understand some of. And of course, as I said, as I said at the beginning, I'm beginning to understand more and more just by talking with you and associating with you. But a lot of people just did not understand the simple distinction between the internet and the World Wide Web. And, and the hack proof. Now, here you say a lot in your paper about 100% hack proof environments. Right. Is right. that possible? Well, if it wasn't uh, possible, well, yeah. we, wouldn't, we wouldn't. Your paycheck, direct deposit? Yeah. You, you really didn't think somebody went to the bank and deposited money directly into your account. Well, we know it's digital, yeah. Yeah, well, that goes through the Internet. And no one's ever lost a dime. Mm -hmm. If you were going to hack something on the Internet, trust me, they want your money. Oh, yeah. Oh, you gotta okay. believe that. They want the money, see, see, see. right? So if they if if they were going to try to hack something, they would try to hack into Walmart's cash box. Right, right. You try to hack into Exxon's cash box. That's where all the money's at, right? How many gas right. pumps in the world are all feeding money into one cash box? That's right. Isn't that yeah. the cash box of a cash box of choice? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. And that's why they set it so that you can't get access. People to are it. putting money in 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 the, in the gas pump cash box. I mean, <laughs> Okay. Every yeah. minute of the Pay day. Pay attention, right? Yeah. And but 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 you've never heard of anybody stealing a dime from Exxon. No. Interesting. That's what the internet's for. Interesting. You get your paycheck deposited into your account, whether you're in town, you're out of state, and you can go spend money out of your account, no matter what state you go to. Any gas pump in the country will swipe into your checking account. Right. That's what the internet is for. It gives you universal access, ubiquitous access to your cash. Okay. I the purpose it. of the internet was to was to digitize the currency, so that you could access your money without having to run back and forth to the bank every time you wanted to buy something. So that was the main purpose of the internet. That's the, the main currency. Of the internet. The currency. Wow. Data's cute, warm and fuzzy, yada yada yada. But the internet was like the U.S. government realized that the most important part of what this country does globally is manifest the power of its wealth. If you cannot project your wealth across international borders, then yeah, you got issues. And that's what this allows countries to do, is you can, you can the, the, the interaction between business, uh, government, and, 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 you know, commerce and all that stuff is much more fluid when you can do it digitally. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine if we had to still send letters across the ocean? Yeah, right, right. Okay, how many days does it take to send a letter? Yeah. The amount of business that takes place now because of the, the internet is, is exponential, yeah. an exponential increase over what it used to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, people don't lick stamps anymore. Right. Okay, business takes place at a much higher rate of speed and you have much larger numbers. Yeah, and um, it must save our environments. It has to be a safer environment. It has to be a safer environment. Um, right. Corporate espionage was around long before the first hacker ever bought a computer. Um, corporate secrets, uh, patent information. Oh my God! I mean, Ford and Chevy been you know spying on each other since day one. Um, Lockheed, McDonnell Douglas, the competition in the defense industry. The, the word competition is what America was all about. That's how we got better. That's yeah. how we. That's oh, how our yeah. economy was designed to grow was by companies competing with each other. Free enterprise. And they were yeah. looking to steal secrets in a heartbeat. Why would a company choose to get on a network where all the secrets are in jeopardy? There you go. There you go. Okay? Yes. They wouldn't. Okay? Absolutely. Okay. And why would you design a car without a steering wheel? <laughs> okay? Or a train without brakes? Like it says in the document. It, it, that when we built the internet, it, it, we're not stupid. It's really the, the bottom line. And, and, and the internet is 100% secure. Um, your money's not going anywhere. This is why the FDIC exists, the Federal Depositors Insurance Corporation. They, they will insure the transactions. It's, 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 you're good. Somebody stole my identification. Yeah, the, you know, your ID is a whole other issue. That's not yeah. what the Internet's here yeah. for. It's it's not your here. money. They didn't steal your money, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. okay? Okay, we got And whatever it. money has been disappeared, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that. But your ID, yeah, your information is, is you know, problematic. <laughs> You've got to manage your security. And, and, you know, we don't take nothing from that. But uh, your cash, we got that. That's what the internet uh, was job, the job of the internet, and intranets and extranets do. Well, we talked recently to a school district, uh, which, whose name I, can't, I won't say here, but one of the things was, uh, and we talked to them in terms of smart cities, and maybe be, maybe partnering with smart cities mm -hmm. as one of the you know as one of the entities on that particular network, and uh, we're seeing that education institutions need a way for their students to have access to learning and the tools of learning any place, anytime, ubiquitous learning, right? Uh, but they need to have it in a 100% hack-proof, safe environment. Can you, can you say more about that? We've been doing that for decades in the business environment, 
Um, we've had large um, government projects in the defense industry. We had hundreds, thousands of employees all working on a top secret project. And they all had to be trained on certain stuff. And some of the stuff was brand new. It was very secret. Um, there, there were a lot of issues associated with maintaining, you know, uh, how do you maintain a secure environment with employees that are in several different cities, uh -huh. in several different countries, and they all have to attend the same training class and has to be done under secure conditions. And the military is watching over your shoulder. Mm. Okay? okay? This is what we do for a living. Okay? So when the school system says they want to, you know, bring students into education, yeah, well, we got that. We can do that. That's something we've been doing for a long time. And um, um, we did those type of environments don't make it to the TV commercials. They don't make it to the evening news. So people don't know much about it. But you have to have that environment for things to work. Yeah, yeah. And also, I wouldn't want my child uh, being able to come into a private network, an intranet, and, and be, or any kind of net, and be having access to, you know, porn and, and all kind of stuff. And with an intranet, you can actually prevent, you can actually control what comes to your particular network, right? It's not just control. It's, 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 it's our network. It's a private network. Yeah. It does absolutely nothing that we don't tell it to do. Yeah. And when we give you an account on the network, your account's already been set up for what it can and cannot do before you yeah. get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yes. once you get it, you become a member of a group. And the group just is not authorized to do this, 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 or this. But it is authorized to do that, that, and that. Yeah. And this is how we've been doing it for decades. And, and it's exceedingly efficient. Um, we, you know, we, we, you've, you've, you've never heard of corporate secrets being stolen through the Internet. No one's patent information has been stolen through the Internet. No one's payroll has been, been snatched through the Internet. You've never heard of anybody breaking into a bank and stealing cash, doing a bank robbery through the Internet. No. Okay, you've never, and, and believe it or not, the money is the number one objective of, of thieves, not your data. <laughs> they don't want your data, they want your money. They want your money. <laughs> they want your money. So, yeah. They can't spend the data, they can spend right. their money. And, and, but they realize that the money, are, are, those are on uh, money networks mm -hmm. that you can't get access to. You have to be a member of an intranet, and the intranets get access to the extranets. Okay, so it's okay. layers of security such that you can't even, you know, we don't even talk to people unless you're a member of this group. And you can't even get a member of that group unless you're a bank. <laughs> okay, and if you're a bank, yeah, well, you show us your banking paperwork, we'll give you a password. Right. It's not complicated. Once you get into that group of banks that are all a member of this network, that network is granted access to a money network. Yeah. And, okay. and that's how it maintains 100% security. That's how you can get your medical records at Walgreens. Yes. Okay. Because Walgreens has to be part of an intranet. Each one of the Walgreens is part of an intranet, yes. and that intranet of Walgreens, they've got access to a mednet, and the mednet controls what access Walgreens does and does not have, have into and yada yada, all the medical access that they need to do their job, to write your prescription. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling much better about everything now. So, you mentioned in your white paper, Ted, about why, why am I? What is actually a why am I? It stands for Wireless Metropolitan Area Intranet. And what it does is it, it falls back on some principles that have been around for more than 70 years. We had a thing called AM, FM radio back when we were young, remember? Right, yeah. <laughs> Where yeah. you could listen to music on a handheld device right. as long as you stayed inside city limits. Right. Well, people spent most of their time inside of town anyway, and you turn on the radio station, you drive around, and it, it worked. Yeah. And that concept is still valid today. So what we've decided to do is, is take the concept of a, of a city-wide network with a single signal and bring that concept over to the hotspot. So we have a hotspot that covers the entire city, just like the radio stations used to 50 years ago. And when the cities have a hotspot that okay. big, anywhere in town, you get unlimited access to whatever you need access to. That's a big hotspot. But you're right. Radio stations used to have, you know, the right. whole, whole, they cover the whole city. 50 megawatts. Or right, right yeah. Area. Oh, the 50,000 watts yeah, is a whole lot of power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it allows you to have an audience that was exceedingly local, localized audience, localized marketing, localized um, um, uh, advertising. It was, it was uh, uh, activities and events. Um, um, this is how parties were, you know, thrown. Or the, you used to do dedications to, to kids. And when we were young, we used right. to go dedicate a song to a friend. That's right, yeah. Um, this is all local activity. And this is what the world's trying to come back to. We've been to the global environment and left a bad taste in our mouth. It's mm -hmm. time to come back to a little bit more local activities uh, and, and purchasing local uh, from, our, from people here. 85% um, of all phone calls are local and 99% of all spending is local. Okay, I guess so, so, so yeah, why do we need to have all the global access if 99% of your spending is right here in the city? Exactly. So what we've done is if you, if you bring all that to a radio station concept, we have a radio station that covers the city, that services the city, you can shop everything, 99% of what you need is all inside this environment here, and since it's private, 
It's one hundred percent secure. Wow. Okay. And because it's wow. wireless, and because it's Wi-Fi, it goes through any device. Wow. iPhone, iPad, I, whatever, you know, all the, all the different devices get access to it. It's 100% secure because it's not on the Internet. There was a time before everyone had dedicated connections where you only went on the Internet if you needed to. Otherwise, your computer worked just fine off the Internet. We're going to bring that back. As long as you log into our network, our job is to make sure that you don't need the Internet. Anything you could possibly want from the internet we have it and have it probably better and it's 100 percent hack proof yeah that's the, that's the key right there right. that's the main and thing. there's no pedophiles there's no uh, a terrorist there's no traffickers of drugs people weapons or, 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 or ma weapons of mass destruction there's no terrorists there's none of that stuff Cheers. on our network okay everybody who's on our network we know who they are we know where they live so it's a yeah. secure environment and parents are going to love this i got kids yeah well i do too okay yeah. and i'm tired of you know we're dealing with kids can and cannot do on the internet and uh, so what's necessary is an intranet. And they have websites. We'll have thousands of the call. Instead of www, it'll be CWW, City Wide Web, instead of World Wide Web. Because you said most of the stuff happens local anyway. So what we're going to have is local websites where you can do, do uh, all the major brands. Walmart will be in there. All the, all the Kroger's. Everybody will be in there because they all realize that this is the environment where most of the people are because we provide 100% free total talk text data everything you need no charge why should we charge you is that kind of what mcdonald's was trying to do offhand a little bit impetuously they tried they bit off more than they can chew they ended up turning a fast food restaurant into an internet cafe that serves hamburgers and because it was free there when you could, you could go into sitting at mcdonald's all day long and, and man and that was the problem some people were coming into mcdonald's and setting up their office <laughs> okay, the old guy in the corner. Yeah, I guess I'm guilty too. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's sitting over there two or three you know, hours after a while. He's only had a couple of coffee. <laughs> but he's been online now all morning. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> downloading what? It's cheap. <laughs> so, you know, what they're realizing is, is that uh, people, once the reputation, once the word got out, now they're dealing with inappropriate activities. You got people over there downloading things they shouldn't be downloading in the presence of children. Um, they've got loitering issues. Um, they've got uh, occupied space issues where they need to clean that table off, but the guy's been there for six hours now. You know, he's been there all day long on your internet. <laughs> um, so now they're 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 working. They're responding with uh, limitations where it's no longer maximum speed. They cut you down to two G and three G speeds, and, and let me use the thirty minutes or an hour online. We have to relog okay. in again. Okay. What that does is, if you have a large file on a three G connection, it's going to take forever to download. And boom, your connection cuts cut that to thirty minutes. So what it means is we'll give you internet access, but not really. <laughs> okay, it's, we, we, we bit off more than we could chew to begin with, and what we're doing now is we're... Danger, approaching safety limits of engine containment field. Is that cool or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right through the interview. <laughs> yeah, let's pause that. Uh, yes. So, this is really an education. I mean, this, this is something that if people only understood that I mean, if places like McDonald's and and other places can offer free text, data, and talk, why are we paying all this money for our, our service? Well, the, the, that's because the phone companies are regulated by the FCC. They don't have a choice. They have to sell so they, you phone service. They got to charge you. Right. They, they they can't sell you hamburgers. Well, no. So yeah, they have to sell you phone service. Well, that, that's what they do. And, they, and they're regulated such that yada yada yada. This is what they have to do. McDonald's not regulated by the FCC, and neither is Wi-Fi. But Wi-Fi will do telephone service. Yeah, the regulation didn't anticipate that, and you can't change the regulation because of that. Mm. So what it comes down to is anybody can supply phone service now. All you need is a hotspot, and you get in there with Skype, and you can video chat with somebody in, you know, at the South Pole. Doesn't matter. Wow. Okay, and that's because the cost of it, is, all the cost is, is how do you get to the web? That's where the cost is incurred. Yeah. And if someone doesn't charge you for that, then you get to the web for free, then boom, yeah, all your calls are free. And that's what Wi-Fi calling is for on your phone. Is it'll do Wi-Fi calling, you just need to get a Wi-Fi connection for free. Yeah, right. True, Once that true, happens, true, boom, true. all your calls are free. That's true, isn't it? I'm not confused. That's true, Not just this one. Because what we're going to do is take that hotspot at McDonald's and stretch it so that it covers the whole city. So you can get your hotspot at home, and all your free all your free phone calls. You can sit in the bed and do them. So that's really what the school district really was interested in when you when we talked to the school district about how you, they can, that can happen. Because what's happening is, as an educator, I'm seeing teachers who are frustrated. Some some teachers don't you know they 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 make 
homework assignments and, or project assignments and some of this stuff has to be done at home. Well, they don't want to, they, they really can't assign everybody the same stuff that when you go home and do this, you know, because everybody doesn't have access to broadband or even a computer, you know. So, but now with the whole flipped classroom idea where we will, you know, talk about a certain project in school and then you go home and you do your, you do your internet thing, you go on the internet. And then you come back and we work together in teams. This is going to, this is going to really aid that a whole lot. I mean, it's going to aid that all. Now everybody can have access. But now how would it be paid for? Say it was the school district and they want to have all the kids to have this. How would it, pay, how would it be paid for? You know, um, they have options. The way the uh, Wi-Fi is set up by the, by the government is, is you have the option to charge for it or not. Or not. Oh, I see. So um, you can charge for different types of services or not. Okay. Um, you can have a business class where some company wants to fly drones in town. Uh -huh. This network will fly drones anywhere in town, ubiquitously. The mm. competition for that is amazing. A lot of folks want to deliver pizzas to your house by remote control. Right. This network does that too. They have to pay. And they'll not be charged an, an ridiculous amount, just enough to keep the network up. But the fact that the network is up is all it needs to process the phone call. Wow. I mind you, keeping the network up is, is going to cost a couple dollars, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, you know, uh, traffic control, um, robotic uh, lawnmowers for the city, for the county. Um, there's a lot of um, activities at the, the, at the municipal level. Uh, um, at the uh, fire department level, there's all sorts of things that we can do to support them. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, community uh, package delivery services in the city that will be coming up as the network goes online. There'll be new, it's a new industry. It's a new environment where new companies will come online. Um, other companies that are existing will learn to use the technology to their advantage. Um, uh, Smart Cities concept is, 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 is a validated concept. It's not going anywhere. The technology will change. The, 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 the applications will grow. The, the, the understanding in the community will mature. But the infrastructure has to be in position to support all of that over time. And that's what a WIMI does. It provides the backbone. It provides the interchangeability of components necessary to ensure the longevity of the network. Well, but with a WIMI network, I understand that. But, but doesn't topology matter? I mean, Cincinnati, for instance, has all these hills. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why we wanted to do Cincinnati in the first place. The, the, radiographically speaking, uh, <laughs> this is the city that you want to do it in. This is a difficult city because it has seven hills. Okay. It produces a, a lot of radio shadows. Um, your site survey in a city like Cincinnati is probably the most difficult one in the country next to San Francisco because of the, of the physical topology. Um, there, are, there are so many valleys and, and canyons and, and glens, they call them. Uh, oh, okay. that Danger. Approaching safety limits of engine containment field. Such that... Uh, um, there, there's, there, it, it's a challenge uh, to get the radio signals to, 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 to transmit evenly, consistently, and this is also where we're going to demonstrate our ability to provide that service and say we can guarantee no drop connections. Wow. Um, no drop connections. I, I lost track of how many phone calls have dropped with cellular technology. Yeah, right. We guarantee no dropped calls. And Cincinnati is the best place to do that because this is where the most, this is the dropped call capital of America. Exactly, with all these hills. Okay, every time you come off one of these hills, you lose your call. Right. Okay, and, and go between some uh, hill between you and you, it's just, a, it's ridiculous. But uh, with this environment, we would love to come here and show that, yeah, this is how you do it. Wow, wow. Okay, all right, so I think we've talked uh, about a lot of things now, but what we want to do is maybe to make some more videos. Mm -hmm. So that the, that the average man in the street can understand what this whole thing is about with smart cities and with 100% hack proof and all the things we've been talking about here. It's just fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it blows my mind, man. So, I look forward to it. Let's do it again, man. All right. Thank okay. You, all right. All right. See you next bye -bye. time. All right.